Hey, that's an escape. <laughs> so you have no, yeah. This And according to Arabic sources, in addition to Theon, Hero of Alexandria, Alexandria is known to have revived the elements and to have added some of its propositions. And although no names have survived, there seem to have been several commentators and editors who revised and were added new material to the original text of the element. So the tra tradition of the elements is not simple. There are at least two major tra editors, Hero and Theon, and several others whose names are lost. I once made a diagram. Yeah. I once made a diagram like this, uh, this one in the, uh, the left, Euclid, Hero, and there's the uh, tradition that comes to us through uh, Codex P and another through Theon and many uh, codices. But Bernard Pitrak, who had published a new press French translation, uh, Mark, uh, remarked that the diagram, this diagram in the left is misleading. Because even the hero of Theon made a new edition, a manuscript which contained uh, all the edition uh, survived. So, and, uh, so an editor does not change uh, the tradition, but multiply the traditions. So I, so I tried to make another one like this. So from Euclid to Hero, but of course the Euclid himself uh, remained, but uh, at some point they they are they are perished. Then from Hero uh, or uh, with the passing heroes, uh, perhaps uh, some uh, traditions come to Theon, and Theon made a new edition. But there are, there are other traditions where, which does not pass Theon, and most of them uh, have perished, and only. Uh, by chance, only some of them arrived to, to us. So, because this is uh, purely, uh, purely imaginary, uh, but in the tradition of uh, work, uh, something like this uh, happened. Then, what did the commentators do? And what did they, uh, where did they intervene? It is easy to imagine that Commentators were most frequently tempted to remedy propositions that had not been satisfactorily proved, or that did not make good sense because of scribe error. And it is precisely such a problematic proposition that is the subject of today's talk, book one, proposition four. What is noteworthy about this proposition is uh, the operation of superposing one side of a triangle onto uh, one side of another triangle. This implies that the line AB, for example, can be moved. However, in the elements, motion or transportation rarely appear in the demonstrations. So I explain how the elements avoid the motion. So in the elements, the object stands still. No motion is referred to in demonstration. The only exceptions are the first three postulates that to draw a straight line joining the two points, then extend a straight line, then draw a hook. Even with that postulate three, draw a circle, it is not directly possible to draw a circle. For example, uh, so you have a center and you have a, a, its diameter somewhere else and, and bring it to the center and draw a circle. This is not pos directly possible. Uh, through this uh, postulate. And indeed, there is a proposition which uh, makes it possible, which is, is demonstrated that it's possible to, uh, so I'll explain it later, this is proposition one, uh, the two of the first book. Uh, if, if there is a, a, a line uh, uh, somewhere else from the uh, center, and you can bring that line to the, to the center and draw a circle. So uh, the motion uh, is uh, something uh, not per, uh, permitted except, uh, uh, except uh, in the three postulates. So some exceptions uh, exist in solid geometry. So uh, the definition of sphere, cone, and cylinder, all these are def defined by rotation. So uh, semicircle, 
and triangle, uh, lect uh, rectangular triangle, and mm, rectangle are uh, rotated to, uh, to make the, those solid figures. And Albert Sabo, mm, he was, uh, he was uh, rather a uh, historian of philosophy uh, than that of mathematics. But uh, Sabo uh, thought that it was response to eletics, so uh, that comes from Parmenides, uh, who denied any change or any movement. And uh, so the famous, uh, famous words of the Parmenides, whatever is, is. So uh, nothing generates or nothing perishes. However, the proportion one four seems to ingeniously move or carry a line and superpose it onto another. And before entering one, uh, one four, uh, I refer to some proposition. First, proposition eleven one, and this is the example of a. Um, proportion with insufficient proof and where commentators uh, intervene. So this proportion uh, says, a part of a straight line can't be in the plane of reference and the, pre uh, and the part in the plane more elevated. This is the first proportion of the solid geometry. And in the first proportion, Euclid uh, demonstrates that a line is always in one plane, <laughs> And it's not possible that uh, a line uh, uh, extended uh, go out of that plane and uh, and belong to another plane. So the line is alpha, beta, gamma. And you could, uh, so to prove it by contradiction, uh, suppose that alpha, beta, gamma, this, uh, this straight line, is so alpha, the part alpha, beta is in one plane. And the beta, gamma is another, uh, on another plane that is more elevated. Then what does he do? Then he extends alpha beta uh, to uh, there. It's possible because in plane geometry, a line is uh, can be ex uh, is uh, extending. Then you have the, the two straight lines alpha beta gamma and alpha beta there, of which one part alpha beta is uh, uh, coincides. And this is which is impossible. Perhaps the, uh, the original version ended here, but we see the uh, we see the uh, so explanation. Can, can, uh, one question: How what is the, what is a plane in in Euclid? So how plane are defined? This is something that I do so, not know. So what that, is a plane? That's that exactly, uh, exactly the problem. So he can uh, he can he could not naturally. He could not uh, define in an appropriate way what the plane is or what the solid is. So that's a problem. Indeed, he said, uh, but uh, this is, I have to move this to somewhere else. He uh, commented, uh, no, uh, there's no doubt that the proofs of the first three proportions are unsatisfactory. And so, uh, so uh, okay. you could not able to make use of his definition of a plane for the purpose of these proofs, and they really depend upon truths which can only be assumed as axiomatic. But axioms is, is, uh, exist only at the at the beginning of the uh, book one, uh, and those axioms uh, are only for um, plane geometry. And uh, Euclid uh, wasn't able to uh, to set uh, axioms for solid geometry. That's a problem. But then mm, we see uh, in Codex P and the uh, theorem version different explanations to, uh, for uh, for the for the impossibility. Codex P tries to uh, draw a circle, uh, but uh, but I'm not sure if if uh, even. Uh, Drawing a circle with center B and uh, uh, distance or radius uh, B A, uh, the circle pa passes through the, the through beta gamma uh, this line. The, the theorem uh, simply says a straight line does not meet a straight line in more than one point. If two straight lines uh, meet at two points, they must coincide. He said this. 
So, so apparently, Theon was not content with the proof he received and proposed his own arguments. Then, and the text of P uh, can't be genuine either, uh, because uh, postpose explanations. So, Euclid always presents the reason first, then, uh, then he goes on to the, uh, the conclusion. So, because A, uh, we have B. This is the Euclidean style. And he said and said, uh, uh, B because of uh, for uh, something. Uh, uh. And so Euclid, uh, in, a, in short, Euclid always go ahead and he never retrospects. This is Euclidean style. Then I'll show another uh, example uh, of the later intervention. So uh, this is a famous Pythagorean theorem. And then uh, we have a diagram of Hybeer. The Hybeer's diagrams are, are all copies of an uh, earlier edition of Argus, 1820s. Uh, and indeed, the Hybeer's edition copies also the error of the diagrams in August's edition. August was a gymnasium teacher, and he had never seen a manuscript, a manuscript of Euclid before he he uh, published uh, his uh, his edition that is that had pedagogical uh, uh, pedagogical purpose. Uh, so August tried to make the diagrams as general as possible. All the manuscripts gave uh, for Pythagorean theorem and uh, these are uh, triangles like this. So this is uh, this is not only rectangular, but also isosceles. Of course, this uh, the theorem is good uh, is good uh, also for the this trial, but August changed it like this. Now, what is interesting? The, the two lines alpha epsilon and beta cap are lacking here. So. Uh, the, uh, the uh, so I skipped uh, that. So then after uh, after protasis or enunciation, say, uh, the general uh, general enunciation of the pro the proposition, then uh, you could introduce the diagram and the, and the labels, the names of the the points. And he uh, he restates the uh, proposition uh, using the, those names of the points. This is the orismos. Then he makes the necessary uh, construction. That is called katascale. Then, so uh, here, no mention is made for uh, alpha, epsilon, beta, k. Alpha, delta, on the left side, alpha, delta, and zeta, zeta, gamma are joined. Uh, but not uh, the alpha cup, uh, epsilon, the beta cup. Then, in the proof, he uh, showed that this uh, rectangle, beta lambda, is equal to alpha, beta, zeta, eta, this uh, square. And then he said, similarly, uh, this uh, rectangle in the right is equal to the, this uh, square in the right. But then they are uh, inserted this phrase. Uh, alpha, epsilon, beta, kappa being joined. Uh, in Greek, uh, epizelknumenon, ton, alpha, epsilon, beta, kappa. And this is genitive absolute in Greek, and that corresponds to the use of participle in English. Uh, but uh, one can understand that, uh, that demonstrative, even without this phrase, and indeed, uh, this, these lines, alpha, epsilon, beta, kappa, are not joined in the manuscript. So this is probably uh, an interpolation. And genitive absolute is not very, uh, very often uh, in Euclid. But we will find them, uh, find them in 1.4, uh, which we, we are going to see. So I, I think, so very probably this, uh, this phrase, alpha, epsilon, beta, kappa joint, is an interpolation. Now, we have come to the proposition one four. This is the first theorem of the element. 
for the first three propositions, one, two, three, a program for the construction of something. And this uh, one, four established the side angle side congruence of two triangles. The proof consists of superposing the two sides around the equal angle of one triangle to the corresponding sides of the other triangle. So the process dynamics is very long. If two triangles have two sides equal to two sides respectively and have the angles contained by uh, equal straight line, lines equal there, they also have the base equal to the base, the third uh, side. And then that triangle equals the triangle. This means that the area of the triangle is equal to, uh, to the area of the other triangle. And then remaining angles are equal and so on. So I follow the uh, heat, uh, the English translation of relation of heat published almost 100 years ago. <laughs> but I, I had to modify them uh, where I have, um, where I have to, uh, have to uh, argue uh, in the detail of the Greek, uh, Greek words. So I go on to the uh, active phase. Let Alpha, beta, gamma, and the epsilon, zeta be three triangles having the two sides alpha, beta, alpha, gamma, these, these ones, and uh, equal to the two sides of the, the epsilon, zeta, the respective, uh, and so on. So this is the uh, minus two diagram. And the hybrid diagram, that is uh, the copy of August diagram. And two, uh, another line here under epsilon, zeta. So uh, at a certain point, the, this proportion uh, argued that uh, epsilon uh, beta gamma transposed to uh, uh, epsilon zeta coincides <laughs> with epsilon zeta or not. Uh, so August thought it, uh, or some some later manuscripts uh, have the, have these uh, double lines, and August adopted them. Uh, but the, the, this uh, this uh, this does they exist in the the best manuscripts. Then, uh, the I say so. So you could repeat what should be approved uh, in terms of the names of the points. I say that the base beta gamma are also equal to the base epsilon z, and then triangle to triangle, angle to angle. Now we have come to the Olysmos. and now Apodeixis started the uh, demonstration in uh, in uh, strict sense begins. So uh, we try to give a very faithful translation. So uh, we, uh, we detach ourselves from his. So he translates the Greek word ephalmozo uh, into uh, this is, um, uh, so ephalmozo uh, is, is uh, composed of eti and halmozo. And hal from hal halmozo, or the root of this word, we have the word, for example, harmony. Uh, and eti halmozo. Uh, so, so fit uh, fit on, uh, but for example, we uh, we find enar mozo in and har mozo, uh, when uh, we put a certain line in a circle and uh, draw a chord, and this uh, this operation is called uh, you could use it for this operation and uh, uh, use the verb enar mozo, and here. Uh, he uh, transposes the line and uh, put it onto a uh, other, and he uses epi almozo, efarmozo. But efarmozo is used uh, either as transitive verb or intransitive verb. And I use uh, the superpose, but this is trans uh, yeah. transitive verb only. So when it is used, it is used as transitive verb, I use superpose. But uh, when Farmoso is used as an intransitive verb, and then I uh, I have to uh, translate it uh, in passive voice, be super voice. So, and, um, I first pointed that the English style of the demonstration is different from Euclid's ordinary style. So, uh, so I give a paraphrase in typical Euclidean style. This right. So uh, this upper part is the faithful translation of Euclid. And I relate it in typical Euclidean statue. 
So let's read this carefully. Superposed or being superposed, this is genitive adversary. Uh, Faramoso menu. So the, uh, this is the participle uh, pass. Superposed triangle alpha, beta, gamma on the triangle delta, a, epsilon, z. And place the point alpha on the point delta and the straight line alpha, beta on uh, delta, epsilon. Everything in genitive adversary. And then uh, the result is the point uh, B will also be superposed. And uh, this is uh, this is a in transitive verb future on epsilon because of a b being equal to delta epsilon. This is a very awkward English. And uh, in Greek it is the uh, dia dia is a preposition uh, correspond to true dia uh, dia plus uh, uh, article to uh, this is a neutral article uh, with infinity a nine. So the, uh, this is the uh, form to uh, uh, express the, the cause. So D is an A9, then alpha, beta, T, delta, epsilon. So I try to uh, translate it because of AD being equal to delta, epsilon. This is uh, post post justification. But this is not very, uh, mm, uh, very often in, in Euclid. So in a typical Euclidean style, so what can we say? Then let triangle alpha, beta, gamma be superposed on the triangle delta epsilon z. So you could very often use this perfect passive and imperative. And this is very, very rare in Greek and it's, uh, sometimes it's difficult to find, uh, find its form in dictionary, but it, it appears very often in Euclid. Perfect passive imperative. Let this be done. So let triangle alpha beta gamma be superposed on the triangle alpha delta epsilon zeta. If it must, uh, it will be like that. I don't know, I don't know if uh, there exists such uh, an um, uh, occur, uh, we can find an occurrence in classical Greek called uh, corpus. <laughs> And let the point A be placed on the point delta, the straight line alpha beta on delta epsilon. Then, and then the uh, Euclid or the text uh, explain the reason uh, afterward. It was supposed to justification. But Euclid uh, of, would say that because alpha beta is equal to delta epsilon, uh, then because epi um, ah, because uh, corresponds to epe and then corresponds to um, but the word um cannot uh, appear at the beginning of a sentence in classical Greek. Uh, so uh, the two, the order of two words are always like this. Epe um is found very often in Euclid. So some imperative, uh, let this be done. Then because something, we have this. So then, because AB is equal to the uh, alpha beta is equal to delta epsilon, the point beta will also be superposed with epsilon. Uh, this uh, uh, would, be, uh, would fit very um, well uh, in the style, in the Euclidean style. But proposition one four, it uh, has a very um, impressively different uh, structure, style. And uh, and the continuation, and now alpha beta superposed uh, again, uh, change of absolute uh, on delta epsilon. The straight line alpha gamma will also uh, be superposed uh, on delta epsilon because of the angle uh, being equal to the again uh, postposed justification. Hence, and then the, uh, this is uh, this conjunction host, uh, so he translates it hence. But usually you could use R, therefore. So host uh, is um, less frequent, much less frequent than uh, R in, in Euclid. Uh, then the point the gamma also uh, uh, will coincide with the point that because of because of uh, diato uh, A9. So um, again, um, I postpose to just catch. So we can. Eliminate, the, eliminate them all in standard Euclid style. But 
then in the photo, but B had also been superposed. Uh, strangely, Fuig here appears crew perfect. It's very, very rare in the elements. Uh, but it's a fair mocha. If the last uh, iota is missing, then it would be a present perfect, a fair mocha. Uh, so uh, it, might, it might be a scribal error. But the, this is uh, another uh, exceptional thing in this proposition. Hence, and, and the author of this proposition loves hence and does not use R. And this is another uh, particular uh, 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 peculiarity. The, 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 then the base, so now beta and gamma, beta and gamma are put on the epsilon zeta. Respected. Then that's beta gamma, the, the straight line beta gamma coincides with uh, straight line epsilon z. And he says that, that uh, beta gamma will be superposed on the base uh, epsilon z. Then there is an expl uh, explanation about it. But he, in his translator, expands it. And I agree with him. And in this phrase, uh, there, uh, there's a very Strengthening. For if and this if uh, so under this if comes uh, uh, when B superposed on the epsilon and the gamma on Z, the beta gamma is not superposed on epsilon Z. Then uh, from the, uh, from here to straight line uh, comes the result. So that in a conditional sentence that the if clause that is a protasis and then the apodosis uh, that uh, the conclusion begins here. Then uh, after if uh, in English we cannot uh, use the future, future tense. It's always um, so. If you come tomorrow, and uh, of course as we learn the English, you don't, uh, you mustn't say if you will come tomorrow. <laughs> I learned this, but in Greek it's possible. Uh, but in Euclid he doesn't use uh, usually he doesn't use future tense uh, in the uh, a. Uh, uh, the word for Gre the Greek word is a for if uh, in the if clause uh, you could already use it the present indicator, but here you could use this a future indicator. This is very rare. And the conclude uh, and then he sums up the conclusion. So the text of one four is characterized by linguistic idiosyncrasy. Frequent use of genitive absolute and frequent post post justifications, and uh, both eliminate in standard Euclidean style of a presentation. And uh, I have found another proposition where, so, uh, uh, where the, this uh, operation superimposing uh, uh, some uh, <laughs> geometrical object onto another. This is 324. This 324 proves that similar circle segments on equal straight lines are equal. That means con congruent. Similar segment of what? The, what is the similar segments of a circle? Then th this is those of which the angle at the circumference are equal. Because in book three, uh, the ratio and the proportion uh, are not yet introduced. So one cannot speak about uh, the similar. Uh, general uh, similarity of figure. But you could define similar segments of a circle uh, by using the uh, angular circumference. That proof contains the same word, superpose. And so the protasis is similar segment circles on equal straight lines uh, equal on uh, one another. The actus let alpha epsilon beta this, and gamma zeta delta be similar segments of circle on equals to trend alpha beta gamma delta. And the, I say that the segment alpha epsilon beta equals the segment gamma zeta delta. So they, uh, uh, they coincide. So apotex is that proof. For the segment alpha epsilon beta superposed on gamma zeta delta, um, so the, the same uh, the same uh, gent absolute uh, as in one four. Uh, the point alpha placed on gamma under the straight line for beta of gamma delta. The point B 
that will also be super potent point delta because of alpha beta being equal to the gamma delta. Always dia plus dia to infinity. This is the postponed justification. But uh, as I wrote uh, in italic, uh, this can be written in strictly Euclidean or ordinary Euclidean form. And then alpha beta is super, super uh, post on gamma delta, the, the base uh, code. Uh, the segment alpha epsilon beta will also, also be superposed on gamma zeta delta. For, um, so uh, here, uh, the reason is <coughs> explained afterwards. For if the straight line alpha beta is superposed, uh, and this is all, again, if close or, or A in, the, in Greek A, A close the condition, uh, the close of the condition that contains the future tense. This will be, as I said, this will be very rare in the Euclid. On the gamma delta, but the segment of the is not superposed, then so what would happen? So we have two versions. The codex P and the theorem it gives different text. So uh, P says that it either falls within it outside it or it so within it is the alpha L strong beta and uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, circumference uh, falls inside the gamma, the gamma zeta there or uh, falls outside. Uh, but in the uh, preceding proposition twenty three, uh, these two possibilities uh, are eliminated. So uh, the only possibility is that it crosses like this. Uh, but then, code speed uh, says this. The theorem says, but, but this but is strange, so I, I have to expand it. So there, uh, there must have been some scribal errors or something. So, uh, so but should be uh, replaced by them. Then it cuts across at gamma eta delta and a uh, circle doesn't cut circles more uh, points than two and so on. Which is impossible. So I explained that uh, the art falls outside the inside, and those possibilities uh, are already, uh, already eliminated by the preceding proposition. So, existence of two versions, theorem and the non theorem, testify the theorem or someone. Or, if we are more, more cautious, uh, someone responsible for the extant theorem inversion was not content with the argument and tried to improve. Uh, and there's a, a word with a, uh, out of context, <clears throat> but, the, uh, but this might well suggest that the text was altered again after theorem. So there, uh, there was repeated intervention, I think. So, I sum up and I give some conjecture. The linguistic idiosyncrasy demonstration in one form, and P24, the use of gen uh, genitive absolute and the post post justification indicates that they are interpolated by the same person and, and the original proof is lost. Or well, the original proof was uh, much, it may have been much shorter or uh, it may as well uh, absent that it, it was for the for Euclid something very obvious and he wrote nothing and somebody had uh, other explanation. That's also possible. The only intervention in 324 in that, uh, in that support this hypothesis. The axioms are not sufficient to give a satisfactory proof and people after Euclid continue to look for a better proof. Such interventions may well have occurred uh, not only uh, with theorem. In more places and more time than we can confirm from the extant manuscript. And then, can I continue? Yeah, yeah. And then, so you have about six slides, okay. so you finish, perfect. Yeah. So, the proof of one four superimposes a side on another. This implicitly assumes the possibility of motion, although such arguments are deliberately avoided in the elements as I explained in the beginning. Then, proposition 1-4 might somehow depend on 1-3 uh, 
quaint but uh, superpose is the size of the triad. So I I can I soon explain what one tree is. This interpretation is attractive, but it has difficulty. Both one three and one four are used in one five. One five is the famous uh, post asinol that uh, isosceles in isosceles triangle and the base angles are equal to each other. But but it's mm, uh, demonstration is rather complicated and it looks like a uh, like a bridge. Uh, so and that can uh, cross this bridge. So uh, in medieval universities, uh, when uh, when they arrived to one five, so uh, many students had dropped. <laughs> so uh, it is called Ponsasinorum. So, uh, but anyway, so one three and one four both are used in one five. So there's no problem if one three is not used in one four. And both one three and one four trees uh, somehow similar operation or moving a line to an, uh, onto another. But one three uh, use the, the expression cut off. So cut off a shorter line uh, from a longer line. And one four uh, superpose, uh, superposes uh, a line onto another line equal to it. So the expression is different. But usually, usually Euclid uh, uses the same expression when he uh, applies a formal result uh, for his uh, argument. Because the elements didn't have the number of propositions. In the be in knowledge time. So, uh, is, uh, this is because one four uh, or three thirty five is a code theorem and so on. But and there were no printing, and and so you could uh, instead used uh, repeated the same uh, expression uh, to uh, to, uh, uh, to to make it uh, clear that he is using some uh, formal result. So this is very, very so only in um, late antiquity. So it seems that the, uh, the text of Euclid was somehow fixed, and uh, every scholar had the same text. And then, then we find the uh, difference by the proposition now. But in the original, no. So if he uses uh, uses the different expression, then he's not using that uh, that one. Uh, but uh, so I'll explain what one three is. To explain one three, well, I have to explain one two. And one two is to place a straight line equal to a given straight line with one end at a given point. So it's difficult to understand what it is. So uh, you have a, a point alpha, and then a line beta gamma uh, that is not at the point alpha. And you want to uh, draw a line equal to beta gamma. Uh, but having a uh, one end point at alpha. So uh, uh, this uh, so this means that uh, even in the uh, postulate tree, you are allowed to draw a circle with a gi uh, with given point at center and a given distance, given the radius. But you cannot directly draw a circle having a uh, center at alpha. And uh, diameter uh, no, the radius beta gamma. So what does Euclid do? First, he draws, uh, he joins alpha beta and draws a equilateral triangle alpha beta delta. And to construct the equilateral triangle in the first proportion one one, and then uh, with uh, yeah, with center beta radius beta gamma draw a circle uh, eta gamma theta. Then you find the uh, point uh, eight uh, in the prolongation of the delta beta. Then uh, you draw another, another circle with center delta and uh, radius delta eta, this one eta couple lambda. And you find lambda. And then delta lambda is equal to delta f, f. And delta alpha is equal to delta beta. So the difference are equal. So alpha. Uh, Lambda is equal to beta gamma, beta eta. This is equal to this, and this is, of course, equal to this. So this is one, two. But then, but in this proportion, you cannot uh, indicate uh, the direction of alpha lambda. 
it may fall <laughs> somewhere. So in the following proposition one three, so you have the uh, line alpha beta and line gamma, and the alpha beta is bigger than the gamma, and you want to uh, cut alpha beta at the point epsilon, so that alpha epsilon is equal to alpha gamma. So using one two you uh, you bring it to somewhere uh, from alpha, alpha delta. Uh, from alpha. alpha delta is equal to gamma. You, you can get alpha delta uh, using pro uh, the preceding proposition one, two. But of course, uh, you don't know where, uh, in what direction alpha delta is. So you draw a circle uh, with center alpha and radius alpha delta, and you will find the point epsilon. And alpha epsilon is equal to alpha delta and to gamma. So you can cut a short, uh, so given two uh, uh, two straight lines, then uh, the cut off the shorter one uh, from the uh, uh, longer one. But uh, there is something uh, inconvenient with this for me, uh, because this proposition uses the absolute. <laughs> so I, I continue to say that the absolute is very rare in Euclid, and it, it, uh, it may not be Euclidean style, but in this one three you could use it then gentle absolute. But so so uh, this is very similar uh, as a operation to that of one four. One four brings the uh, a straight line aside of a triangle alpha beta and bring uh, and fix it on another line delta epsilon. One three anyway uh, takes a line gamma and bring, brings it to another line. But in, in this case, uh, this gamma is not equal to the alpha beta, but it's shorter. And you could use it uh, different words uh, to cut off or to uh, superpose. But so uh, this is my pure conjecture. Uh, but uh, one, one could use one three uh, to one four if uh, one changes uh, uh, change, uh, change the demonstration one four. So uh, there are two triangles. This is a condition one uh, one four and alpha beta equal to uh, delta epsilon alpha gamma to the delta zeta and the angle alpha is equal to angle delta. So the first let delta epsilon and delta zeta be prolonged to a and c. From the line delta eta, let the line equal to alpha beta be cut off. Then, because alpha beta is equal to delta epsilon, the line cut off coincides with delta epsilon. So, alpha beta is superimposed of uh, delta epsilon, alpha on delta and beta on epsilon. If, if we rewrite the uh, demonstration one four in this way, then uh, we can directly uh, refer to one three and uh, uh, to justify the movement uh, or transportation of the line alpha beta onto line delta epsilon. But this is my pure conjecture, and I have no documentary <laughs> support. Uh, to conclude, so the extant Greek text of the elements does not necessarily originate in 12th century BCE, that's the alleged Euclid's lifestyle. The scholars are now more conscious of possible later interventions. And some are not possible, some are uh, uh, certain. And so sometimes uh, in the text, uh, text we find that he says something, he is, so that is the third person singular, that, uh, that refers to Euclid uh, uh, clearly. So uh, there are some uh, very obvious interpolations, and some are less obvious. Then, the demonstration 1, 4, and 3, 24 are probably later elaboration. We do not know what the original version was. So original version uh, may have been very, very short or, uh, or may have been absent. So it would be too audacious to assume that 1, 4 was thought to be obvious and didn't exist. This, um, this is <laughs> perhaps too audacious. But another conjecture is that the original version 1.4 explicitly referred to 1.3, but I have no documentary support. And anyway, possible later, later intervention in the proposition suggests that its proof was thought to be insufficient in antiquity. 
and arguments of later origin are numbers a part of ancient thoughts. So, uh, so of course they they, they are uh, of great value. Uh, I don't say they have. Uh, uh, we we should uh, we should dismiss them. So further linguistic analysis may enable to identify more interpreted arguments. So uh, I find here a gentle answer. Then of course I I ask, but how many? Gentle absolutes uh, are there in the text of the elements, and where are, are they used? Of course, it, it's not, uh, we have the digital text of you, but it's not automatic to uh, identify all the use of gentle absolute. <laughs> so, this is the problem. So, uh, but uh, if we can uh, go further in linguistic analysis, perhaps we can attribute each of the, the each of them to a certain period of author. Oh, this uh, this style is typical uh, in this period of that so. Oh, this is very similar to um, to what Apollon's writes or to uh, to Ptolemy or so. So it is designed to make syntax trees of the past trees of all the phrases in the elements. Oh, there are not more than one hundred fifty thousand words. So it's not infinite. It's finite. It's limited. And it's one of my projects, and I tried to do that once. And then I arrived 10 or 20%. So proportion from book two, three, four, and perhaps six. And, uh, but it, was, uh, it took uh, really much of time. Then I first thought it was easy, because there are only two or 300 word, uh, different words in the elements. The vocabulary is very limited. And he repeats always almost the same thing, let this line be drawn and so on. But then, so I I described the, the grammatical rules uh, and, uh, and try to learn, learn a, a program uh, to make a past three. But then I found that even, even the, such a monotonous uh, uh, Sentence in the you could. There are many small variations which we understand somehow. And uh, I have found that human brain is something, uh, something marvelous. So, we, <laughs> we learning a foreign language at a certain point, we, we learn what we haven't learned. But of course, comp uh, we one has to teach everything to computer. <laughs> so, the, the uh, my. Uh, I try, I hope to continue my project and mm, complete the, all the past trees, uh, at least for the elements. So thank you. And then if you're interested, you can download uh, this uh, presentation. You can question remarks also from the the, the Zoom, if someone, I think that we have a very specialist in connection. So if you have a question also from the Zoom, please, or here. Uh, David. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, just a, so the, your conjecture um, supposes that someone later on wrote these two, rewrote these two propositions to introduce the movement idea. Um, um, but so do you have any hypothesis as to what kind of context could make this seem acceptable um, when it was not so in the element? So make this acceptable to use the movement. Do you have ideas or do you have uh, uh, an idea behind your mind, uh, behind your... So mm, to move on line to another, uh, this idea uh, seems rather natural. So. Uh, it, so it was Euclid who uh, it was not so natural. So uh, Alpha Sab uh, Sab uh, uh, thought that it was under the influence of the uh, Atlantic philosophy, or he had to. So Euclid had to respond to some, uh, someone who might uh, criticize him in in point. And he, I think uh, so. I think that Euclid was very careful not to be entangled in philosophical debate. 
for example, so he he says that a lie has the uh, the two end, the ends. That uh, this means that he. So what was the the text? Just a moment. So in in the very very beginning of the element in the definitions. He very careful, for example. Oh, grammes de perata se meia. The ends perata, but this is plural. So the ends, end, ends of, of the line are points. But saying this, that <laughs> there is no in, uh, indivisible point of the line. No? And a line has, has always two ends. He does say the ends, but has ends. Uh, so uh, saying this uh, definition, he implicitly excludes the existence of indivisible lines. And uh, in this way, and Euclid uh, seems to be very careful not to be uh, uh, not be uh, entangled in the philosophical argument. And so uh, he was very careful, and he said uh, three. Uh, uh, postulate uh, to draw a line, to extend a line through a circle. And so uh, then uh, he stops uh, to uh, saying uh, say anything about, about uh, the motion, the, the motions. And he develops the, uh, the geometry of still stand uh, object. So after you could, it was always not uh, always possible, uh, uh, possible to uh, speak uh, speak about. So let's move this uh, this line onto this, so they will consent. So, so uh, I think you uh, you could was rather exceptional. Uh, Piotr from Zoom. Okay, thank you. No, you are muted. No, he's not muted. I know you are not muted. So why will you not understand the email? Speak, please. Okay, now. Piotr. How about now? Can you hear me? No. No. Why? You have to unmute one computer at least. Piotr, can you go? Okay, can you hear me now? No, one Can you speak, Piotr? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now it's good. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, Professor Saito, can we go back to your slide number 10? Okay. Just a moment. Slide number 10. Okay. And the claim is the avoidance of motion. The only exceptions postulates one, two, three, okay. However, all throughout the elements, Euclid applies these postulates. So there is all over the elements, the movement. How do you respond to this? Thank you. Thank you. Go. Go. No, 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 no,
Have you heard my question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so you are right. Uh, you could always use use the movement, but uh, uh, only through these three postulates. So one does not. Uh, so, uh, but uh, but these three postulates uh, allowed you only to the join two points or extend a line or draw a circle. Uh, but uh, super uh, superpose a line alpha beta to another onto another line delta epsilon is something completely different. I think. That's right. You're right. Anyway, the movement is all over there. Yes. <laughs> so so you could limit the movements uh, to uh, to three postulates. And once these three postulates are admitted, so you you are free. You could be freed from the polemic about the possibility of movement. Mm -hmm. That's what he wanted, I think. Okay. Henry, Henry Mendel. Now you are muted, Henry. <laughs> You are muted now. You are thank muted. You. Now I can say thank you very much. Hi, Good to see you, Ken. But I saw you recently. <laughs> By the way, Aaron, you should come to give a talk to our seminar once. You are very close. I'd to love you. to. I'd okay. love to. Sorry, bye. Well, let's talk after. Let's okay. talk in the break. Okay, go. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Getting from here to down there at, on a Friday morning is something close to hell. And there is my first spam call of the day. Okay, sorry. So, the, I mean, one is a follow-up from the previous question. Uh, the rotation of figures isn't a postulate. There's no postulate that you can rotate figures, but rotation of figures is essential to book 11, uh, 12, 13, because you can't get spheres without rotations. So, I mean, you're right that superimposition is a little weird uh, because it's a different kind of motion. But the objection can't be that Euclid is, I mean, the Zabo thing about Greek mathematicians just rejected motion because that would be just... I mean, that's just means that you haven't read Greek mathematics or something. I don't know. I mean, that that's that can be dismissed as 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 crazy. But there certainly are certain restrictions that Euclid imposes on himself in a pedagogical sort of way. I mean, and superposition, you're right, is weird. But that doesn't mean that it's not there. It's just that it's weird. So I wanted to really ask you about genitive absolutes. So uh, I just read the uh, uh, Autolycus on Moving Spheres uh, last week. Mm -hmm. I put it on my website. And um, it's chock full of genitive absolutes. Indeed, there's a formula that's... A, a, a genitive absolute. I don't have the text in front of me, but it's something like uh, with the sphere turning around. Mm -hmm. uh, so genitive absolutes are happy and autolycus. I realize that Euclid is formulaic, but if we edited the text of Euclid to be formulaic, in a strong sense, we would end up with something that would be as much a monstrosity as anything anyone has, has ever come up with. Because after all, um, no one's that, no one writes that crazily. So my, my question is to, to be before you say, okay, you could uses genitive absolutes, or how few do they have to be before you say, I'm going to eliminate every one? <laughs> That's the question. Yeah. So I don't well, say that all, all the, the 
you use it uh, gently absolute uh, spurious. But it's true that in Euclid, strangely, gentle absolute is very, rather rare. Uh, though uh, I find them uh, used in every proportion uh, of Apollon's conics and so on. So um, uh, I'm not yet sh sure, uh, but some gentle absolutes are interpolations, as I showed in, in 147 Pythagorean theorem. And so uh, I suspect that. Um, the perhaps for uh, Artwick is uh, uh, nearly contemporary of Euclid and he uses it everywhere. But Euclid, um, perhaps Euclid had a possibility Euclid uh, had his own style. Or, or the, uh, the first books, especially the book one, has been, edit, uh, has been edited and standardized uh, by a uh, uh, by uh, uh, subsequent scholars and teachers. So book, book one has a, compared to other books, uh, especially a, a very canonical structure and uh, linguistic features. So the, this, uh, this may well be a result of later intervention. So it's very di uh, difficult to say. But anyway, I, I, I want to, uh, check all the uh, occurrences of gent absolute, and mm, I hope to uh, arrive to some conclusion. Uh, so, as for, for what is more important is the post pose justification. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is a sign of later interpolation, I think that that dia to a ni and so on. No, I'm I'm not, I I have no sense of these things. Uh, but you know diagrams better than I will ever know them. Uh, and is it just possible about 147 that you're not supposed to draw those lines? Uh, it's just saying, here, with uh, we do this and you can do this. Autolycus has a few examples of these where you, you aren't supposed to do the actual construction. You just know that if you do that construction, then everything else will follow indeed autolycus mm -hmm. says it in an impossible way he says with uh similarly we will show on every other point that uh that this occurs now uh that this property holds or in every other point except b, b it doesn't hold and obviously he's not going to draw a diagram with an infinite transfinite number of points uh so is it possible that the intention there is just here's what here's here's what your next step would be if you were to to here here student you student do the next do 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 the proof for the other for the other for the other square and you'll see that it it works but I'm not going to tell you to do it I'm not even going to put it in my diagram because you're going to have to do it yourself isn't that possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, of course, we don't have uh, as we don't have the Euclidean original, and so um, uh, so it's difficult to de decide. But um, so uh, so it's a it's a larger question, a part of larger question. When Euclid says similarly, we can do it. Uh, so there are two expressions. Uh, homoios the de we we will, we will similar we will prove. Or similar, uh, or, or homoios the de excessetai. Similarly, it will be proved. There are two expressions, uh, and they uh, seem to be used uh, indifferently. Uh, but if uh, if one same person uh, is responsible for whole the text, whole text, then only one expression should uh, appear. So the existence of two expressions of uh, the demonstration uh, demonstrate the similar demonstration which uh, which is not st stated explicitly for they are similar uh, and the existence of two expressions we will demonstrate or it will be demonstrated so one of them may be spurious <laughs> this is another uh, uh, my conjecture and i have to yeah uh, so i have to study more uh, uh, to find some uh, conclusion so the, there are so uh, once so we'll, after 
1975 or 1996, uh, we are all uh, are haunted by the question, uh, is this phrase uh, genuine? Uh, then and every word of the 150,000 words of the uh, Euclid uh, is, uh, we can suspect <laughs> every word. So now we, uh, so it's, so I, what I can say is that we have to, uh, 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 study more and try uh, various approaches and uh, so I don't know I'm not sure <laughs> which one? one, eight. one eight. yes yes it, it's very similar to that, that uh, side 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 yeah do you, do you find the same uh yeah, I think so. More or less the the the, the same uh, same expression, I think. Yeah. If I monomese if I monomezu the menu gar and so on. Yeah. Then absolute uh, superpose. Uh, then uh, because of being dear to Aina. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. yeah, almost the same. So one four and one, one eight uh, comes from the, the, the same author. So my question is then the following. Um, usually, when, or at, at least in my experience, what I have seen is that when an editor uh, introduces uh, some something that is not part of the original, uh, they usually add thing, things to the text or at most maybe they change one word for another word, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen any case in which they erase completely a paragraph and uh, write another different paragraph. Another possibility is that that explanation did not exist and the, the original pr proposition was very short and and so invent to add practically add a, uh, a whole uh, paragraph. So it could be, yes, do you think that it could be, if it was, something there and mm. it was very short do you think that it could be rescued it could be mm. but uh, if it was very short and it said uh, only that it's possible it's obvious and something then... ah, then, then, <laughs> but the intervention was made before theon the intervention is very late intervention mm. the intervention was, was early. Well, uh, rather early yeah i think so I have uh, two questions for you. Can I ask? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. I did not see. It. No, sorry. it's okay. I didn't go, go. take myself. My so, go. Um, it's a question about your proposal for uh, using 1.3 and 1.4. Um, so the superposition argument in 1.4, if, if it is convincing to me, it's you imagine a rigid notion of a whole triangle mm -hmm. on to the other triangle. But with just using 1.3, you have individual segments that you're trying. So my question is, how would you start the argument with the proposal to get the triangle with the angle to the third side? Okay. Does this is so, so with the superposition argument, as I understand it, it's the whole triangle being mm -hmm. viewed rigidly yeah. with, but the whole triangle as a whole with the angle and the, the third side. But with using 1.3, it's just individual sides being placed yeah. on the two sides. So my question is how you fill out the argument to get the other aspects of the triangle. Oh. Of course, I didn't want to do it. To pick up a whole triangle to move on to the other. So, so the, the author of the, the extent of the text I thought uh, it's too naive and it can be just right. So, so that also uh, uh, tries to construct an argument. But uh, uh, to, to move one segment is, is, is mm, segment by, uh, by segment. And then it, it, it is more easy to do that than to uh, move the whole flag.
No, sure, but I think that's why it's also reason is intuitive or reason is convincing is because it's intuitive, right? That the the rigid you have this rigid form, and that you you place the whole rigid form over these parts part so that things can be done. But if you just yeah, I just have trouble seeing how where you're getting the angles without just then assuming side angle side. How you how you get oh, it's different. Yeah. With, with your suggestion. So that this is just an argument that we've, if superposition works at all, it's because we're using that intuitive notion of the whole triangle. And in other, in, if you don't have that, you're just assuming you're tied up. <laughs> so, so I think that in one for uh, one, uh, one made this question. But why, why do, uh, do you know that this angle is equal to this, this angle? Right, that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah, but this is, this is a hypothesis. This is some, some, something different. And the, indeed, the, this uh, one four is used for the first time in the uh, one five. Uh, that, uh, uh, the angle goes here, how is that? Uh, so in one five, uh, this is used. One four use this is one five and um, yeah. 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 Uh, and here one four is applied to triangle A B C and A E. So the angle of A E is common. So they, they must be so this the, the first application one four is so the uh, the importance of the angle is guaranteed. Okay. Can can you repeat the same objection because this was my question, my second question. Okay. So uh, let's uh, try to see whether so we have the, the triangle. I I go down into different colors, and then uh, your idea is that we take this and we put here. Okay, mm -hmm. then we take this here and we put here. All right, mm -hmm. yeah. and that if so far this angle is equal to the blue angle, when I have made that, I reconstitute the same angle here. This is what we say. A two years is correct. Then what we do. I have this one here and this one here, and I place the red line that join P on the blue. But what tell me that the red line is equal to the black line here? Only one four. So we apply one four to one four. There is no reason for the red line reconstituted here should be equal to the black line here, unless one four. So, so this point. Uh, is in my uh, at this point in uh, yeah. yes. So, why does the lady should be the same? Why? So, 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 the thing is, what more for side? So, uh, if you really construct uh, the argument, so, so uh, D is this is here and C is here. here. So uh, the two end points B and C are with the E and F is the Yeah, so, so B C is why the length of this is conserved under motion. There is no, no, no argument no, that no, can help no, this is it. This is the, uh, so this is proved by that B uh, is the D goes for uh, D concerned with C and C concerned with F. So B C must concern with F and as uh, so this is uh, must be equal to the At this point, I don't see any argument that can guarantee that. This is the same argument that the Robert Muller, not Robert Muller, Robert Wagner wrote in a paper yeah. on historian mathematics in 88, 86. But uh, yeah. uh, uh, in the big, uh, yeah. by, the way, yeah. by the way, the fact that you cannot find an appropriate proof of one fold. In a Euclid setting is given is proved by Hilbert. 
because in this they show the independence of one force and the other force. So independent of you can imagine, we know by sure that we cannot prove one force within Euclid's setting. So there is no correct proof of one for you set. And you suggest that this proof, and so if in the right, you are your proof, your suggested proof should be wrong. And where is wrong? You seem to me that it's wrong exactly here that we have no argument to, uh, to argue that the red line is equal to the black line. If your proof is correct, then it is wrong. <laughs> so it means that one fall is not independent of the yeah, other. Uh, uh, you should, uh, 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 so, so you, you speak on the bit of the field for that. Hello, Victoria. I, 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 what I can say. Yeah, you can say, 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 uh, this is also in this way, and this is uh, this is they are two men of their limit. So, so uh, that, uh, that's what a uh, uh, historian can say. Then, then there are two different points. One point is whether your suggested proof mm -hmm. would have been original proof of Euclid. Mm -hmm. And another completely different question is whether your suggested proof is correct or not. It's perfectly possible that what you, what you say is right, that this was the original proof of Euclid. I have no argument to contest that. My point is that that if these were the original proof of Euclid, then it was wrong. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, yeah, suppose you get, uh, because but, of the point of uh, of John. Uh, uh, but that was not perfect, and he he may, uh, may, may have been uh, wrong in many points. <laughs> of course, I, I have a completely. Uh, if I can go, there is no other on this point. I have another question that is the following: in a your translation. Yeah, Mm -hmm. You take for granted something that is possibly granted, so I, it's not an objection, but they wanted to go a little bit more on mm -hmm. it. You translate a parmozoa or parmozoa si. si. with a superpole. Yeah. If I go through on the uh, little scope, si. I found no or, or, uh, uh, suggestion or to transpose a parmozoa with a superpole, mm -hmm. super but there is more. I found no or suggest no or translation supported by the little scope, little scope that suggests that there is motion. Uh, the, the, the translation has to fit to be adapted yeah. to the capable of adaptation yeah, yeah, yeah. that is to, to coincide, to be applicable, to yeah. apply, yeah. to accommodate, mm. to fit, to fit again, to adapt to oneself. Mm, okay. So I think that the translation of a superpose to superpose is not at least I am not a great mm -hmm. philosopher. I think the trust uh, mm -hmm. the scope. I don't know whether there is some argument that it's other argument that to translate uh, a permodoble to superpose. But uh, superpose suggest the mm -hmm. pose, so suggest the motion. In any other of the translations supposed by Little Scott, there is no suggestion of motion. So mm, they yeah. are capable of being applied. So if you translate it, if you move it, then you move it. That is not the same thing that you move than you are. So are you sure that the two superpose is a good translation? Hmm. But anyway, the nine al uh, alphabet is here and delta epsilon is the another yeah. triangle. So, uh, so uh, you, um, so using any word, uh, it is right like some more. My point is that it is conceptually different. To say you take this and you put it, mm -hmm. and to say if you were able to put the this here, then you would found it. But in this second interpretation, when you transpose a parmosome with a fit or to adapt or to be capable of adaptation or to apply, you did not directly suggest that an actual movement is made. Okay, so the translation of super, super with a final job is superposed, it suggests the actual motion is done. The translation of a final job with apply or which uh, to be adaptable, or I don't know why, that's not directly. I know that it's very yeah, But for the proof to be convincing, this uh, hypothetical has to be done uh, realistic, otherwise, the, the proof would 
Okay. So, on the part that the the are not working, yes, 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 but I think that if you translate it adds something that is not in the grid if a leader calls it correct, mm, yeah, we don't call it not needed, we see it, yeah. In, in, in Montanari, we find adattare, aggiustare, accomodare. What is it? Montanari. Montanari. Yeah. Montanari. Yeah. And there's also the English, English version of this dictionary. But in accordo con misurare, mette in relazione, aggiungere, essere adatto, idoneo, aggiustare. So, for sure, there is nothing that suggests motion. Yeah. yeah. Accomodare. No. Yeah. Accomodare is. Yeah, in the sense of the fit. Yeah. Mm. I, I can use apply, apply or fit. Uh, but, but anyway, <laughs> some, 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 uh, uh, some of the analytic may object that you are moving the slide on to this. Or why why can, can you apply it on that? So the problem is not so different, I think. If I, if I, like the, the root of pharma has some meaning in Greek. So, uh, harmoso, from harmoso comes, for, for example, the word harmony. Okay. And uh, they are also, also uses en harmoso, en in harmoso. And you, you, you have a line segment and a circle, and you put this as a code into this. There this is an almost. Between, that is literally what it means. English yeah. or Russian. Harmonia can signify. Okay, good. good. So that's empty. That's empty. So it is empty. Yeah. Empty, empty. Yeah, see. Uh, Henri, you want to, to say something more? Or it is a uh, small question. So uh, in all of this, I. You don't accept the common. And in all of this, I've, I've been assuming that you don't accept the common notion seven about uh, F. Harmose Zane. Things that fit onto each other don't. I translate F. Harmose as fit, but fit onto, but things that fit onto one another are equal to one another. You don't accept that as a common notion. I, I've just been mm. assuming this. And uh, uh, so. I, I was just asking that as a question. Did you hear me? You know, uh, ah. So uh, your voice was interrupted at some point. So uh, can you repeat the question? Oh, okay. I'll try again. Let me see if I can get the sound up. Hmm? There we go. Okay. You don't accept the common notion number seven that uh, things that fit onto one another are equal to one another. That you uh, reject that as, as part wrong. of Euclid's text. Because okay. if you accept it as part of Euclid's text, yeah. then your argument becomes a little weird. Because, but so I've been assuming that you don't accept it. I'm, am I correct? Ah, uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, indeed, quite uh, quite effermozonta. A parallel is a lelos esting. Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. Here yeah. appeared the word effermozo. I've been assuming that you reject that. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I could see why one would accept it. The track accepts it, for example, but I just checked. Yeah. Uh, but I could see why one would reject it, but ah. But it's uh, it, 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 depends on the this and uses uh it, so it, uses the word it, 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 I have to be more careful. <laughs> so, so I, I, I can respond uh, respond now. So I, I'll have to, I have to think it over. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Other question? Remark? Objection? Protestation? 
Okay. Thank you, Ken. And we have, we have three minutes break, but I think that we can make a little bit more difference. <laughs> Molto bello, grazie.